Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mercurial by Hyper Elixir and designed by David Go. The game plays two to four players with a single player prodigy mode, it plays roughly about an hour or so, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Mercurial, you're playing as a mage in an unknown land, attempting to gather alterations and spells, utilizing those cards, the alterations, to uh, help you perform certain uh, casting of these spells, and then you utilizing multiple spells in combination to then create these things called heroics. After a certain number of these heroics have been created by, hopefully, you, the game will end and trigger victory points, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward as to how to play, but with a ton of thinkiness, a ton of choice, and options for you to make sure that you can use your spells to the best of their ability. Let's go ahead and dig into the setup, how to play, and then, of course, my review for the game, Mercurial. Let's do it. Setting up the game, Mercurial is very easy. And what you're going to do is you're going to create the play area. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to set aside the heroic, the alteration, and the spell decks. Shuffle them all up separately, and then deal out six cards forming a row next to each of the decks. After you've done so, you're then going to take the cost reduction tokens and place them down on the very far end of the spell row. You're going to place the blue one on the very, very far end, and then the white one will be right adjacent to it on the left-hand side. The next thing you'll do is you're going to take two acuity and one mana crystal and place them on each of the different heroic cards. So you should have two acuity and one mana on each card here. After you have done that, then your play surface is ready. You'll set all the dice, these elemental dice, all of the rest of the acuity tokens and mana tokens aside within easy reach of all players. Then you're going to go ahead and take this equilibrium card and place it in reach of all players, as well as, of course, you're going to be taking the prestige card. And make sure to place all the prestige tokens on the prestige card. And then we'll move on to the player boards. Each player will select one of the four different mages, and if you want to play your, your first game, you can go ahead and select the initiate side for each player. But otherwise, if you're a more advanced gamer or have played more than once, just go ahead and play the unique characters on the front side. A player board will tell you what starting alterations you're going to have, how many of the dice you will start with, how many mana crystals you will have, as well as how many acuity crystals as well. Each character will also have a unique ability or unique starting cards, as well as will tell you what you can turn your mana into if you need to when casting spells. Set all of your mana crystals and acuity crystals on the tracker, and make sure that you have your set dice that you start with on your character board that you'll be using throughout the entire game. After you have done so, and you have your starting three cards, and it specifies on the card what you start with, then you are ready to begin the game Mercurial. And that's basically how you set the game up. Now there's two other little things you add. Uh, basically the first player will just start with what it has, resources available, and then each additional player is going to get one, two, or three acuity based on their turn order. So the second player will get an additional acuity, the third player is going to get two, and so on and so forth. Also in addition to the first setup, the first start before you start your turns, you will take the die that would have been allocated on your player board and you will roll them. And after you've rolled them, you will set them aside next to your player board so that you can see what dice you have that you can use when casting spells. Now, to note, what you can do in the game, because I'm going to explain how it goes now. This, it's pretty simple. You have one of two options. You can take and play, or you can cast. Well, it sounds pretty simple, but there's quite a bit to it, and I'll explain how they work right now. Firstly, you are going to be able to take and play. You can choose to take one of four different things. A, you can take an acuity and place it on your board. Acuity is going to be used when casting spells and for other things such as taking alterations. The next thing you can do is take an alteration. You can take any alteration that you want, but it's going to cost you one acuity to do so. So if I would have taken uh, an alteration from uh, the very close side of the board here, not at the very end, it's going to cost me one acuity, which I will place on the very far right card on the acuity deck area. When you take a card from the uh, specific um, alteration deck, you're going to move the cards so that they form the, the row once again, from the left to right. Uh, additionally, if I choose to not take one of them in the row, and I choose to take the far side of the row, instead I can take all the acuity from that card that has been building up over the game, in addition to the card itself, for free, which is also nice. And whenever I gain acuity or mana, I'll place it on my player board in the circles indicated uh, on the game board there. Any cards that I gain will simply go into my hand, which I can then use to play if I want. Now, what else can I do to take? Well, I can also go ahead and choose to take 
one of these guys here. This is a spell card, but in order to take it, I have to have the requirements. And the spells have their own unique requirements on each of the different squares. For instance, this one here is a red and a blue, or a red or a blue, a red or a blue, or this one is a red or a blue or two mana. And I can then utilize uh, my dice, provided I have the right ones I need, to create the spell. So for instance, I can put two red on here, uh, suffice for the two red I need, and I can take two blue and place it on the spell. And then when I do, I will take that card. All cards require different combinations of things, and you'll be able to utilize your mana as well as your, your, your acuity to in order to purchase the cards and place them face up next to you to create this kind of uh, spell chain in your spell pool. And you can combine these in any way that you want. Most of them are going to give you uh, one or one different type or maybe a choice between the two different types of mana, which will be used to buy heroics, which I'll explain later. So in this case, I'm gonna have five red or seven blue after I've spent the cost to get the spell. So this is another take action. So let's run over more again. I can take an acuity. I can take an alteration, uh, whether it be to pay one acuity or of course if I have acuity on the very far end one, I get that one for free and all the acuity on it. Or I can take a spell as long as I have the required dice and or mana crystals and or acuity to buy it. And when I do, I place it down on my board. In addition, whenever I place anything like mana crystals or acuity or dice on a card, those will stay locked on that card until otherwise noted. And I'll explain that as well later. So you're gonna only have a certain number of cards you can use because you only have a certain number of dice available to you. And of course, in addition, you will be taking a card from this stack here and you will be pushing these guys along the row and forming the deck once again. And those are three of the different take actions. The last take action won't make a whole lot of sense, but I'll explain it and it'll make more sense after I explain what happens next. If you want, you can take all the cards that you have used, all the alteration cards that you have played on your previous turns, and you can put them back into your hand. You're never going to lose alteration cards after you've purchased them. They will stay with you for the remainder of the game. But when you spend them, you will not be able to use them again until you get them back, which is one of the other take actions. So for reiteration, I can take an acuity, put it on my board. I can take an alteration, whether it be to pay for it or get one for free. I can take a spell as long as I pay for it with the requirements, or I can take all the cards, alterations that I have played previously and put them back into my pan for later use. The next thing that I can do is I can play. So take one of those four things and then play. I can play one alteration card from my hand. Now it makes more sense why you'd bring them back. And each of these cards is gonna have a requirement of some sort or some type of beneficial um, a spell or ability. Think of these like action cards or instant cards from Magic the Gathering. Uh, some of these cards will let you turn your dice from one way into another, so red into purple. Others will simply be going to let you gain acuity. And some others might make you spend acuity in order to turn certain types of your die into other types of your die into other types of your die. Additionally, if you do not want to use their main abilities on the top left-hand corner, you can always use them to gain an acuity, if it says so on the bottom left of the card. So use it for its top ability or its bottom. And they're all explained in the rulebook as to what they do. And that is the basic turn for taking and playing, which is mainly what you're going to be doing throughout the entire game. The last thing that you can do instead of take and play is you can choose to cast. And casting is very simple. As you go through your turns gathering certain spells, you'll be chaining them up, you'll be attaching them together. And they're going to give you a cumulative total of a certain type of spell. So for instance, if I have a four blue here, and I have a 10 blue here, and then I have the previous one, which I have with this, a seven blue here, that is a spell that I can utilize to get a heroic. I would add 10 plus 7 plus 4, 18, 19, 21 total blue, and I can choose to cast. Basically what happens when I cast is I take all of the mana and I put it off to the side, uh, back or put it back onto my board. I will then take all of the acuity and put it into the pool here, and then I will spend these cards for the mana. And I will look on the heroics here as to what I can purchase. Every heroic has two different types of costs, either the red or the blue cost. And I have 21 blue here, so I would probably look for the highest value blue I can find. And in this case, I would take this one here. This is a 19 blue or a 14 red. When I take this guy here, it's gonna give me seven points at the end of the game, and it costs 19, which means I have a remaining two blue left over, which I can't spend because I need at least four in order to spend any additional blue that I might have. However, I will set this aside for later use because it's gonna be worth seven points at the end of the game. All of these spells are going to be discarded, which means I will not be able to utilize them anymore. I can go ahead and place them actually in my pool in addition to with my heroic, and 
Uh, then my casting is complete. All the dice that I had previously placed on my cards will be re-rolled and put back into my pool. I will gain the mana crystal from the heroic and put it into my pool as well as any of the other mana crystals I had previously used, which means I'm always going to keep my mana and it's always going to return back to my board after I cast a spell, as well as the acuity I gained from gathering the heroic. Now, if I'd spent acuity on my player of spells, I would have to actually put those into the discard pile as opposed to the mana. And then that's pretty much the idea of the game. I would go ahead and replace this uh, heroic with a new heroic card. I would take one blue mana crystal and two acuity and place it onto the card here. And now I have a new heroic which I could get or somebody else can get. And just remember that you're always going to be refilling the pool here whenever a card gets removed. And the only one that doesn't matter as far as shifting, shifting goes is the heroics up top here. And the game will end based on the number of players. If you're playing a two player game, it's four heroics. If you're playing a three player game, it's five heroics and so on and so forth. And so you're going to be taking a look and tracking how the different heroics you're going to have. And once that happens, you calculate your points. And how you'll do that is you'll look at the very bottom of your cards here, in addition to any other specific type of bonuses that you might get. Which I'll now explain a little bit of the in detail intrinsicity, intrinsicies, intrinsicies, you get what I'm saying, the uniqueness of the game. One thing that's unique is I can create equilibrium, which means instead of trying to go for all blue on a spell or all red, and some of my spells are special, which I'll talk about in the explanation of the game, my review. But if I had, let's say, six red and six blue, that would make six equilibrium. So I would actually get 10 red or 10 or 14 blue when casting that spell. And I'd also get an equ uh, acuity. And based on how much equilibrium I can gather means I'm going to have a more powerful spell that I'm going to cast. So I don't actually have to try and go for all red or all blue. I can in fact try and go for equal numbers of both. But I have to have equal to create equilibrium, which will then give me even more value if I'm able to do so. And in some cases it'll give me a victory point as well. So equilibrium is very, very useful. Another thing to note when is I cast a spell and I had that 21 total casting cost, but I can only buy something for 19. Let's say that I had 20 four, right? And that spell, that heroic I bought was 19. I'd have five left, five blue left. And for each additional four blue or three red that I have left over, it will give me a victory point for each one I'd like to you know, cross over, which will be added to my victory point pool for the end of the game. So never run out of, try and use your mana as, as wisely as possible, as well as at your spell total value. So you can get as much as you can. Another interesting thing here in the rules, these guys are called Arcanas, is there's three Arcanas that you can choose to begin the game with if you'd like. And I didn't explain that in setup because you can choose to add them or not, it's really up to you. But these guys are gonna have certain requirements, like you have to have these specific three types of cards, or you must complete an equilibrium of 12, or maybe you have to have 27 or 38 of the two different mana spell costs. Uh, but you'll gain one of these guys here, and it'll give you additional victory points at the end of the game if you have these guys. So obtaining these little bonus objectives, kind of like in Catan, how there's like the long longest road, you can kind of obtain these for achieving the specific conditions required for them. And at the end of the game, you'll check to see, do I have two fire? If I do, I get a victory point for each two that I have. And if the fire is going to be based on the different spells that I have cast. This is a, a fire and a water spell. And oh, I got two right here, which can explain. I got two reds here. So if I had this specific magma dude here, he'd give me one additional victory point. So Arcanas can give you bonus points. So equilibrium is one way, additional spell values another way, and also Arcanas. And you can choose to play with the equilibrium on arcanas if you want or you can set them aside if it's not your first if it's your first game that you're playing and that's basically the idea of the game. You have some starting alterations that you can utilize and they're each unique to their own specific caster. Some casters are gonna have unique abilities. And uh, finally, some spells are gonna have a unique symbol, which is gonna be a little sun here. And that sun means that if you have rolled a die with a sun value on it, that any of the spells that you have that have a sun on them, you will get the higher benefit as opposed to the lower one. And in this case, this card says it's gonna be worth one fire for each card that I have, or it's going to be worth two fire for each card that I have if I have one sun die available in my pool. But this character here always has the sun, regardless of whether he has it on his dice or not. All right, I think you basically got the idea of the game. Um, the, the last little thing here is there's a little cost reduction at the very end of these spells. And this one here, it's gonna cost you one less blue because it's on the very end. And the one adjacent to it will cost you one less um, 
no, acuity. So uh, when you spend acuity, you can spend two acuity for one mana if you ever want. But remember, acuity is going to go away so if, as, as to how you spend it. You can also spend acuity on your specific alteration cards when they tell you to do so at the top of the card. So they're kind of like a mix-all bag. They're useful, but they're going to go away. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about my review. I think you got enough of an idea of how to play the game Mercurial by David Go. So as you can see, this game is actually rather quite simple. You can go ahead and take and play, or you're going to cast if you have enough spells in a spell chain. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. It is a mind burner. It's a thinker. It's one of those games where it seems easy on the surface because, okay, I can take one of the four things. Do I take one of these acuity? Do I take an alteration to give me more types of spells that I can utilize on my play phase? Do I gather a spell? Because it's maybe going to be the most useful for the specific color of spell I'm using. Um, uh, or do I take all the cards back into my hand that I had played previously? And, and then, of course, what card do I play? Do I want to rearrange my dice? Do I like the colors of my dice? Oh, I have these void symbols. They don't do anything. I need to play a card so that I can turn them into a wild, thusly letting me choose whatever side I want. And now I've got two red and a blue, which is perfect, because I can now utilize these to cast this specific spell over here. And so you're constantly choosing what do I take, what do I play, uh, when do I play it, and uh, what type of combinations are going to work best for me? Do I want to gather equilibrium, going for 8 red and 8 blue, or 9 red and 9 blue, or do I simply want to push as hard as I can for as many red or as many blue as I can to get these heroic cards? Heroic cards are going to be worth more the more spells I cast. Do I want to cast early? to get a smaller one? Or do I want to cast later to get a bigger one? But maybe somebody's going to catch up or pass me up because I've only got one or two uh, heroics in my playing field, but they are worth quite a lot. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win the game just because you ended it. So you have to kind of make those decisions. Uh, maybe I'm going to save up for one of these Arcanas. And then when I have enough to make this Arcana happen, I can also get one of these heroics, but it might set me back because it might be a more challenging Arcana uh, than it would normally, uh, normally be to just gather one of these specific heroics. Do I get more arcana? Do I try and gather additional victory points by gathering a smaller one? You have to really to do some math involved in this game. And then, of course, after gathering, taking, then you're going to play. You have to choose which one you want to play and what is the best value for your turn. And remember, once you play it, you don't get it back until your next take phase, allowing you to take these cards back into your hand. So you have to be very well aware of when it's going to be time to use these cards and how you're going to utilize them for your dice. Because once your dice go off and go on to a spell, they are going to be locked until that spell is played, and then the dice are going to be re-rolled. Each character is going to have more or less dice than another, so you have to be allocating mana and, of course, um, acuity when placing them on spells to make sure you can get a longer spell chain. Whereas other characters are not as good as maybe some other ones, but they have a stronger value of dice. Not as good, meaning their ability might not be as good. They might start with less mana or more mana. It's really up to the different types of characters. I felt like this game was very balanced in the sense of how you're going to be taking in playing. There's never something you don't want to get ever. You're at least always going to want to get an acuity. It's always going to be useful to you. Um, sometimes you might have miss rolls. There's a little bit of luck in the game, but because of your ability to play your alterations to change dice from one side to another, it never feels like you're out of options or you can't get a spell or there's no way to make a combination work for you. You will be able to make a combination work. It just might not be to your liking. It might not be as high as you wanted, and uh, you might not have played the right card at the right time in order to gain the right type of symbol on the dice. In addition to that, playing spells feels good. Taking the heroics into your possession feels good. Being able to acquire unique prestige cards feels good. And achieving equilibrium is also really unique and interesting because it might cost you less spells, but it might be more challenging to get the spells you need to form that equilibrium, which is also excellent. The game has beautiful artwork. All of his other games have amazing artwork. This is no different. All the pieces here are excellent, 10 out of 10, found it really, really great. Casting the spells feels fun as well. Utilizing the dice, re-rolling them, gathering more mana. You're always going to have additional mana coming in. You're never going to lose mana when you spend it. It's always going to come back after you cast. But with these other ones, Acuity, you have to be more careful with them when you spend them because they're going to go, and you'll have to find new ways to gather them. And sometimes you'll make the choice to give yourself a lot, but you have to give other people some. Do you want to help them out? Do you want to take their spells to stop them from making a better spell, but at the cost of your own spells? It's really, really up to you. The game, I would say, is a positive and negative in the way that it is a 
brain burner. There can be some times of analysis paralysis where you don't know exactly what you want to do because the choices abound and there's a lot of different things you can decide to do on your turn. Maybe playing earlier, playing later a spell. It's, it's It gets to the point where you're like, I don't know what is the best choice in this scenario because all of these are really good choices. Or maybe I have only so-so choices. Or unfortunately I have none of the spells I necessarily want so I have to kind of make my turn work for me even when it wouldn't work as best as I would like it to. But regardless, it is a lot of fun. Overall, Mercurial is a very solid play. In fact, I'm going to say that I, this is probably my favorite game of his so far. I played his original game, Endogenesis and the Expansion, and now this one here. This one's got even more brain burniness to it. There's a lot more combinations and different tactics you're going to be utilizing in it, but it feels like easy, straightforward. I can explain this game in like five minutes to somebody that's sitting at the table with me and they're going to understand the basic concepts, what the two different types of cards do and what they are, what the objective is. The objective to get these heroic cards, put them into your, your area and score them at the end of the game and thusly succeed. There is a solo mode to the game, which I haven't taken a look at just yet, but I will explain it more on Instagram. But overall, Mercurial is an excellent game. If you like deep brain burners, this is something to take a look at. If you don't like a game that's very thinky, that's probably not going to be for you. There's a link in the description down below if you're interested in picking up this game currently on Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mercurial. If you're interested in picking up this game, like I said before, links down below in the description. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well so you can see more of our videos where we show you games more. I just like this one here, Mercurial. And I have no doubt this is going to be a solid game. People are going to want to pick this up just based on the artwork alone. We'll draw them in and the gameplay will keep them invested. Check out the website unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more are live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like Mercurial here and we will be playing this one on our live stream so you can see us play this game in person and determine for yourself if it's a game you'd like to play and it'll be even more beneficial for you um, because you're going to see and witness how the game is played and the reaction to a bunch of people who have never played the game before. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and as always I look forward to uh, not having to say the word acuity. Acuity. I always forget that one but, but man it's pretty simple. Next time.